Sharda Ugra is quite simply one of the most accomplished cricket writers in the country. A varied career that includes a distinguished stint at India Today. She is now a senior editor at Crick Info. <laughs> I was I was I was average student. I was okay. I was middle order. I used to finish in the in the marks. <laughs> and um, I did uh, history at St Javier's College, uh, okay. which is because I like the stories that came from history. I didn't like for some reason I didn't like ancient history, but I'm now quite interested in what life must have been like in 6 BC. Uh, my my grandfather was in the civil service, so he would have liked that either me or my brother get into the civil service. And but I didn't. My I loved history, but. I like sports more. You know? okay. <laughs> yeah. If it was to be in sports, writing, I would have done it. You know? But they, have to say they were very kind. They sent me to Wimbledon in 1992. They were they were really good. It was a really very happy and very very generous bunch of people to work. It was a great place to work, to learn and to work. And you're thrown in the deep end, so you learn. So you learn strange things. You know, you did all kinds of uh, stories, and you just you just learned. You just thought it was fun. It was it was a big novelty at the time. It was there was no other woman. There may have been some in maybe in Calcutta and Chennai, if I'm not wrong. But in Bombay, there was no one. It was a very male-dominated uh, field, so it was strange for for the first few years. It was a bit strange, but I loved it. I just enjoyed it, you know, because it, I was there. I was at matches. I could see what was happening. I could learn and speak. How many years was that? Four and a half years. And then I joined the Hindu, which is a in '93, which is a sort of proper broadsheet in their Bombay office. Okay. Yeah, in their Bombay office. I worked there for six and a half years, mm -hmm. and I did there. I think I was able to do a lot of what is sort of the ground work, the leg work that you do to then, which really helped me when I joined my next job at India. Right. And uh, I used to cover a lot of first class cricket, lots and lots of first class cricket in Pune, in Ahmedabad, Gujarat, and a lot of tennis. Uh, wow. You know, in the in the western region. So I didn't travel abroad much. I didn't travel with the Indian team much, okay. but uh, huge, huge amounts of huge amounts of you know stuff. I remember I used to go to Ranji Trophy games uh, because I used to live far away in New Bombay, and I, I could actually spend the whole day sitting next to the scorer with my Walkman on and taking notes, and I was fine. I was just happy. It was just a good time. But being a lady in this field, yeah. Uh, what were the advantages and disadvantages? Um, see, the disadvantage some, most of the time for me tended to be that your own just sense of sort of inhibition, you know, what you right. should say, and you right. had, and I was very sure because the, your whole worry would be they'll think you're a groupie, mm. you know, <laughs> look like a groupie, but they think you're a groupie. You know, you don't want them to think you're a groupie. You have to be serious. You have to dress in a particular way. You have to behave in a particular way. You have to be proper. But I have to say that the, I never had a problem with the athletes. Not once. I've heard horrible stories about what happened to women sports journalists in America. Not nothing. Okay. Nothing ever, you know. But once I crossed my thirties, I was just very happy. I, I, everyone was younger than me. I was auntie, you know. So it's fine. You you don't have to prove anything. You're there for a particular. If you stay there for that long, you obviously you're not interested in, you know, the stardom of of the business that you're in. I left Hindu in 2000 okay. and uh, I joined India Today in about July, June, July. In India Today, I was I had to move away from what was a very comfortable life. It's a ghastly thing called comfort, moving out of a comfort zone. No, I love comfort zones. I love being comfortable. You know, I'm a lazy person and I just like to just sort of coast. But India Today gave me a chance to leave a city that I loved a lot. I loved living in Bombay. I still think of myself as a Bombay. And people in Delhi get very irritated when I crib about Delhi. The thing about working for India Today is that I joined them. And within two days, they sent me to South Africa to cover the Hansi Kronje trial. And I was saying, you know, I spent six and a half years wanting to travel with the Indian team. And oh, I'm, I know I was write, writing sort of features on all kinds of things. And suddenly I was in the, in the biggest story in cricket, you know, in two days' time. It was just, 
and I was filling in the form for the South African visa and they said length of employment with your current employers. So what do I say? Two days? <laughs> right. I said less than one year. <laughs> I did. A very, you work for a newspaper, you have to have a desk, it had to be very strictly done. But I always wanted to put in either in a parag- each paragraph if I could or depending on who was on the desk which I knew who was friendly and who, I mean, who would, where, where the phrase would survive and where it wouldn't. Just something that was a bit off, you know, that would just something that would make people laugh or something that would make them say oh that's a decent comparison or it's a crap comparison or whatever you know just something with a little bit of color because i felt so happy to be at that place where that strange thing happened or something went on that oh, the facts are fine facts are great but if you can make it interesting for people to read if they can find it memorable you know not who's not the damn byline you know but what it says about about sure. what sure. then then it's a you know it's it, 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 it's a good thing you know it's 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 what you'll feel happy reading it you know I mean um, you don't do it consciously you do it instinctively I think a lot of the right. time you know you right. do it instinctively because it, there's no other way to write it it's the only way to say it otherwise it's not right it's not the same it's not what it was it's not what it should be you learned how to structure a story differently you learned a few rules about India right. today right. And that was uh, by the third paragraph no matter what you do in the first two make sure that the story is out by the third paragraph right. telling everybody what it's about so it focused and sharpened your writing a bit. Um, you could get away with saying a lot of things which you would Hindu would not have allowed because it was a right. fairly sober paper. Even though I wrote for the magazine, you have to write it in a serious. You thought you had to write it in a serious way. I don't think I ever wrote funny for the Hindu. You know, okay. um, I may have done on ceiling, which nobody was interested in. Kind of what passed through because the sub wasn't paying attention. But nobody, uh, you know, you just you just could do with a lot more. So you know, open your writing up. Magazine writing can do that. And the biggest sort of um, uh, gift. For someone who's as opinionated as me, was that I got to write a column now and then. <laughs> it was right. like I mean, I knew I sort of wanted to shift out of India today because I'd done 10 years of magazine writing, writing in a weekly, and I, you started getting formulaic after some time. India does well, you do a story of how the team is doing well. What's working, what's not working. India does badly, they can't play short, fast bowling, their bowlers are. It's, it's, it sounds very similar. I become a bit fatigued and I felt stale. Uh, but I sort of stuck on and stuck on and stuck on because I didn't find another job that sounded that exciting, you know, that you could do. And I was a big fan of Cricket 4. It was my home page. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying it because I'm here. It used to be my home page. Once the internet was invented and it was on my computer, it was my home page. You know? So, and then it worked out. I mean, it just, when the time came when I was ready, I just sent him a message and I said, it's given me a new sort of insight into the game in a way I didn't think of it because the last 10 years I've been just doing India, 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 India the whole, the, all the time, which is a great time to be doing it, to be very honest. But at the, now you're looking at the game in another way. You're looking at it as, as bigger, yeah. You're looking at other things, you're learning more things. I mean, uh, my two topics of interest is the <laughs> DRS and uh, ticketing and uh, what happens to people, why do they cheat, why do they go with bookies, you know, all those kind of things. And, and and but I do want to write about other sport, and I do have the freedom. If I'm asked by anyone else, can you write on something about Indian sport? I'm I put my hand up and say, yeah, sure, I'll do it. You know, at this stage in my career, I sh- I've I've gone tabloid, broadsheet, magazine. It should have been monthly and retirement, but it's now gone straight into sort of 24/7 web web channel. So the pace of the work is different. Um, I've just started writing sort of match day copies, which I'm struggling uh, about speed. You know, I just say I'm slow, I'm slow, I'm slow. You know, I'm I need to be at a at a sort of Lakshmanesque <laughs> scoring rate, but I'm very slow. I'm Akash Chopra. You know, I'm slower than Akash Chopra. But there's no deadline. <laughs> there's no nothing is be printed. No trees are cut. I'm very happy about the fact that no trees are cut. I find that I can write a new story, which is a completely plain, bald kind of new story. You can write a feature. You can write an interview. You can write a match story. So it's fun. It's fun again. And and I've returned after 10 years to reporting a match, and I suddenly realize I don't need to have a score book anymore. I have to remember that you can't slip in references that people won't get if they read it somewhere else if you slip in a reference that an Indian audience will get you have to go to explain it for someone who's reading it out they have, they have to know what it's doing there you know um, so it's it's just that you have to just sort of maybe shift your sort of reference points a little bit
the whole thing is this is Rohit Brijanath and my joke is each other. So we all have to write the great book. Mm-hmm. So you have to write the great book. You know, so we keep joking. He said, who the hell do we think we are? Alexander Solzhenitsyn How about and Nadine Gordon. Yeah. So who yeah. do you think you are? Mm-hmm. You know, like with some, what do you think you're going to produce? Just write a book, man. Just start writing. You know, that's how everyone who's in publishing says, forget about this. Right? Just start writing. Exactly. You know, so you yeah, you do want to write a book about this time. Uh, I would like to like try about say the 2000s. I think it will be a good great. be a good time that's to write a book. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It's I guess it's there. It'll come. I mean, at the most of the time, it's sort of your job, your salary, keeping you keeping you alive. I think of myself as a words person, writing person. You know, mm-hmm. uh, television needs you to be. I talk too much. Television needs you to be crisp, concise, and say everything in three sentences. I think this writing is just. I find it a bit. It it it, it asks tougher questions of you. You know, it it just makes you uh, read more. Right. You know, which is what. Which, and, and and I think it keeps you honest because television then and the anonymity of writing sometimes is what I like. Firdos Munda is the South African writer for Crick Info. She started very young in, the, in this field and has already covered a great deal of ground in a very short time. Well, I'm from South Africa. Um, I sort of grew up in a very cricket loving family. And and I started off as a cricket scorer at the Wondrous Cricket Ground and one of my jobs was to do the internet scoring on Crick Info, which is how I got to know the company. Yeah, I did a degree in law and economics and then I did my honours in journalism just in the hope that I would be able to break into the industry. Um, I worked at ETV, which is a South African 24-hour news channel for a long time, but I wanted to write, so I did a lot of freelance writing and then one of my freelance clients was Crick Info. So how long have you been uh, writing full-time for Crick Info? Since November last year, so I'm probably the newest. <laughs> India were here, this was my first tour, was the India series. I do everything on South African cricket, domestic news, international South African news. I also work from home. Um, I'm also basically a one, one woman operation in South Africa. We're not as big as Pakistan or Australia, we don't have a global home page yet. I'm actually the only woman writer. It, it, it's quite tough, I mean, on the, I think there's two extremes. The one extreme is that they think you're a groupie who wants to sleep around basically. And the other extreme is that they, they probably think you like girls a little bit too much. Once people get used to you and once they read your writing, that the attitudes change. And, and if they see that you are good enough and that you're not asking the score every over or how did he get out or you know, those kinds of questions, the attitudes do change. I like to think I bring a unique feminine perspective to things, which is why I try to soften a lot of stories with, with feminine touches, with perspective and with emotions and feelings that I think men sometimes can struggle with. But I also need to be serious about cricket and and you know be writing about cricket issues and getting the the balance right can be tough but I'm enjoying it I think the problem with cricket in South Africa is that it's not a sport of the masses, it's a sport of the elite. When, when are we going to get our next black African cricketer? When are we going to get our next 10 black African cricketers? Because this team is not demographically representative, unfortunately. Uh, Muslim South Africans loved Pakistan. If Pakistan were playing, they were there to watch Pakistan and no one else. We write in saying we don't want to have a quota team, as we like to call it. But at the same time, there needs to be some kind of push. Is the society and and building a society where you're going to have enough representative players, where you can attract the majority of your population, is that more important? Or is having the strongest team possible, which leaves out a lot of your population, is that more important? So guys my dad's age, for example, and my dad's nearing 60 now, um, might be might be bitter, you know, because they missed out. The younger generation, a lot of the bitterness has gone away because people are making an effort. They, they definitely are. And they, if you really really want it, like, like Hashi Mamla, there's avenues to go and get it. It might not be as easy, you know, not everyone's starting from the same place. At Moses Mabida, for example, during that T20 game, there were a, a lot of South African-born Indians in the crowd, and I really did expect them to be cheering India, as they always do, but there was a lot of South African support. There were, there were the Indians, South African-born Indians, were cheering South Africa. So, finally, South African fans are coming to the game to watch South Africa. They're not coming to watch the opposition, which is what they've always done in the past.
I started as a cricket scorer, so I really do. I mean, cricket is is my first love, I would I would say. But um, I've also branched out. You know, I've I've done football. I covered the football world cup in South Africa as well. Rugby is also huge in South Africa, Absolutely. and it's something I'm hoping to to move on to eventually. Um, I think it's important to write some non-sport just to get perspective and to not box yourself in. So I've written a couple of lifestyle columns and features in magazines. So I hope to be able to write a couple of more, you know, maybe a novel one day or so, or a, a movie script. <laughs>